Hi, everyone. My name is Justin Gill. I'm here with Justin Fern. We are here to give you a little glimpse of what the best MP50 players in the country look like. Last year, 2021, NADGT Championships on Halloween, Fern, these guys gathered at Roy G. Park in Austin, Texas, to battle in the semifinals of the NADGT Championships for the MP50 division. We have four guys in the showcase. It's only three holes. Who we got on the card today? Well, uh, at the top, we got James Gorman. He's been a player since 1996. He's got 35 wins to his name. Uh, Larry Roseman from 2014. He's been playing a while. 67 wins. Wow. I'm not even close to that, but uh, two more nice. James Lapino uh, from 03. He has 59 events. Wins. 59 wins. James Lapino from 03 has 59 wins, yes. and uh, that includes an MA1 win this year. Yeah. Uh, which is crazy. And uh, Peter Holdgrave, only been playing since 2017, um, and he's just he's won five in the last year. He showed up with, what, close to 100 contestants and in the top four, showing us what he's got. Yeah, this is 98 competitors in the MP50 field. Uh, for reference, Worlds. Masters Worlds last year only got 55 and right. 50s. So this is a huge crowd. We have a great show here. Three of the best holes in Texas, in my opinion. My favorites. I'm a sucker for hole 14. Yeah. Little short for me, but... Fern likes to crush. <laughs> anyway, should we check it out? Let's do it. All right, here's the showcase. All right, and here we are at Roy G. Check out this canopy fern... It is like being in a little jungle, man. Absolutely. So lucky we were able to get into this course this year. It is probably my favorite in Texas. I love the little bamboo forest. I've never thought I'd see bamboo in Austin, but man, it was a good, good it course. Just, it almost doesn't feel like Texas, but it doesn't. It's got great vibes. And these MP50 guys also have some great vibes. Here is our leaderboard after round three. James Gorman sitting at even after three rounds. Lapino, four strokes back. And Larry and Peter, one off of James. Uh, good morning. My name is Peter Olkreve. Um from Broomfield, Colorado. PGA number is uh, 112164. I'm here, MP50 division, representing uh, Colorado. And uh, we're at Roy G the NADGT National Championships. My name is Larry Roseman, the PGA number is 69699. I'm from Kenton, Texas. Uh, shout out to uh, Church Home, Crossroads Church in Kenton, Texas. I'm uh, here at Roy G, uh, NADGT National Championship. Hi, Jim Lupino from Warner Robins, Georgia. Here representing the Macon Aces, the best disc golf club in Georgia. We're here for the NADGT Championship playing the MP50. This is the lead card. Yeehaw! Uh, James Gorman, Pasadena, Texas. Uh, grew up in Austin, but good work over there. So here playing national championships and hoping this 12-time Kenny Ray flies good for me today like it did yesterday. All right, and these gentlemen started off their round, the semifinal round, out on hole number 12. This one here is a 355 foot right hand backhand hyzer. You wanna clear these last trees here on the left and start to fade right before that tree that kinda of looks like it's dressed up in white. Crash into this green that's guarded on both sides and you have this wonderful little circle one um, opening where everything is available to bang that birdie home. Fern, what are you throwing on this kind of hole? You know, there's a lot of shots you could take here, but I'm thinking something overstable, maybe a mid-range or a fairway driver. Uh, you want to keep it low, but not too low unless you're trying to play the skip. But the trick here is not to go too long. You want to beat those trees when your disc wants to break left and uh, get right into putting range. And James is on the box and he has this Huck Lab. Looks like an overstable, uh, maybe destroyer type disc. And he... Hits that skip, and he is Ooh. down there, absolutely parked. I, there's nothing you can say about that. That was picture perfect. I see why this guy's currently in the lead. <laughs> All right, James Lapino. What does James do here? Right down the middle, just a bit outside. 
mistake you don't want to make. Just held on to it a little bit long, but it looked like he had the right angle. First hole of the day. It's tough. Off the box. You always want two off the first, right? <laughs> In a perfect world. <laughs> All right. Larry's got the box. Larry's from Texas. He knows how to make this throw. Oh, let it go a little early. Yeah, and that's just an unfortunate kick, but there's, you know, an ability to scramble from there. I like that Peter took a moment there. He took a deep breath, refocused. This man is a competitor through and through, you can tell. And he's fairly new, but he is not playing like it. Look at that shot. Perfect down the pipe. Oh, oh. last guardian. Tough break, but he'll have a long look. All right, so we are scrambling with Larry. Can Larry get up and down? Ooh, this looks pretty good. Oh, he almost throws it in from the shrubbery. Larry's got a little 30-footer. Come back for his part. It's a little bit of a tester, but I think I'll handle it well. James uh, ended up in the fairway, even though he was kind of off the right there. We missed that one, didn't we? So he, oh, had a nice line at it, but right into that guardian tree. You can see Peter also hit that tree on his drive. And here's Peter's upshot. Doesn't look like he's given him much of a run, just kind of pitching it up, taking his par. Probably a smart play considering where he's at. It looks like Peter's throwing a beach frisbee or two. <laughs> and Jim with a great upshot. Sometimes you gotta take that rope testing, right, Jim? <laughs> get that bogue, it's fine. Larry doesn't want that bogue. He wants to send this one home. Get that par. Let's go, Larry. It's a great putt. Good yeah. scramble, bud. It looks short from here, but I tell you. When you're in the uh, final rounds of a national tournament, that looks like about 50 feet. Yep. And Peter also saves his par after hitting that guardian tree on the fairway. Was he even trying? Uh, it looks effortless from Peter. It was like a one-arm robot movement. I'm not sure. He's a big man. Okay. Big fella. All that one. Oh, style points? A flip for the bird. Let's go, Gorman. That's slam a slam dunk. dunk. Slam dunk style points. How many points would you give that out of 10? Well, well that, was a, that was a solid putt, save for par. I'm giving uh, that at least an eight or nine. He's taking a disc and putting an end over end. That's tough. Is it windy uh, when you're in those woods? It's not very windy. Here okay. at hole 13, you can see the leaves are pretty still. You want to hit this dead straight 317 foot shot with a mid range or a fairway that doesn't fade out too quickly. Something that has a little bit of high speed turn that you can bend a bit and then just slide on up into the screen nice and easy. You have a couple low ceilings you have to worry about. But once again, another beautiful hole down at Roy G. Look at the vines in the background. You don't want to go deep. It's true. You don't want to go high and the mistake, you want to keep it low, but not too low. So give it a nice little turn, let her slide right up. Looks like a little bit of an early release there from Gorman after parking the first hole. He was trusting the hyzer flip. Looks like a little bit of a... Yeah. A miscalculation there. Let's see if Larry can make the adjustment after his first drive, leaving a little early. Oh, that looks perfect, Fern. A little early fade. Oh, slow down. And a skip, too, just to rub it in. He's a little outside circle. All right, Peter, what you got in store for us, man? Peter's from Colorado. We always cheer on our Colorado disc golfers, being that we are also mile high. And... <clears throat> He goes the Anheuser route. Oh, look at the ugly kick. This thing goes 70 directly, 90 degrees left, Fern. That was really unfortunate. That was very unfortunate. Again, though, he looks so effortless. We don't have a lot of trees up in Broomfield, Colorado, where Peter plays. <laughs> Lapino, down the pipe. Here's the Anheuser I was talking about. He committed to it. And look at this fade. Look at this finish. Safe. How you draw it up? Ideal. I couldn't do it any better. Look at these vines that Peter has to throw through. Oh. You right. push him down into the circle there? I don't know if you guys noticed that, but Masters players are really good at scrambling. <laughs> They're all breakfast chefs. These guys are masterful in the kitchen. Larry, can he make the bird? He's, what, 40 feet out? <sighs> yeah, I just say right around that. Straddle jumper. Just a little nose down. It was on target. It was on target. All right, Gorman. You have the lead. You have six strokes on everybody. What do you do? Bang that thing home. Zero movement in his arm. He, he keeps all of the different joints from moving. It is a one movement action. It's like an upside down catapult. 
And Lapina with the birdie. Let's go, man. That makes up for that bogey on hole one. Nice work, Jim. And Peter from the scramble of the century. Oh, dude. Nice par, man. I remember walking back where you uh, had to make that upshot through the woods, and I was amazed you got through all those vines. Here we are, hole 14, one of my favorites. This is 730 feet. It is a dog leg gentle to the right, but it is a gentle 730, ladies and gentlemen. Is that gentle? It is not a sharp dog leg. It's a gentle dog leg. Okay. So you think people are going to be taking that forehand or are you thinking uh, backhand turnover? I'm a fan of the backhand just because I want to kind of stay straight. With the forehand, I'm afraid of skipping a little bit to the right. Uh, and then I have a, a more severe dog leg I have to worry about. With the backhand, it sets me up for a straighter approach. Okay. Onto this green here. And there's lots of skipping room right here. You can find that road out to the right. And that is not OB or anything like that. Thank you. And you can just nestle it up under this basket 730 feet away. Looks pretty easy. Look at the sun rays. Who's oh, that on the camera? That is our, our tea box is filled with the James Lapino throwing it into this perfect ray of sunshine. It's glorious. Roy G has these amazing sky boxes with these wonderful trees and the sun just pouring through. I don't think I've ever been to a more photogenic course. Look at that turn into the sunlight. These guys, I think, are turning them a bit more than they want. I want to kind of hit Dan, the cameraman, dead straight in the fairway there. And these guys are all kind of pushing that turnover a bit too much. You got 730 feet, guys. Go a little straighter for a while first. First 400 feet can be dead straight. <laughs> well, easier said than done there, Gil. I know. It's tricky. Let's see what Peter can do. Oh, yeah. There we go, bud. Right down the fairway. Oh, that thing is hooking right, too. I don't think he's going to hate that. I don't know. Let's see. Where we got here? All right. Here's Lapino. He's got a little patent pending action. Not comfortable. Still has probably about, you know, 480 to go. Uh, he made it look pretty comfortable. And he's behind another tree. Yeah. But see, you don't want to be all right because it looks like this, but Larry doesn't care. Larry pipes one. Another friendly Ooh. tree kick. And the skip right to the middle of the fairway. Let's go. Lapino with the patent pending a second time. Gentle turnover. Nestled up under another tree. Looks like he's pretty comfortable in that patent pending throw. He looks very comfy in the patent pending. Hey, Jim, get back to us. Did you uh, invent the patent pending? Peter with the forehand. Oh, stay clean. Oh, yeah. That's where you want to be. You want to be on that dirt. Let's go. All right, here's Gorman's second shot. Big power right hand. Oh, tree night. <laughs> the idea was there just a, a little late. James, that's not what you want to hear is that you're still out. But look at this shot right here. Can he get clean? Can he move up that fairway? Let's go. Can he putt? Yes, he can. Pin high. Woo. That was unbelievable. Woo. Just caught a tan on those sun rays, and he's rewarded for it. <laughs> All right. And Larry. Larry, Larry. Let's go. Yes, this looks fantastic. Get in the hole. Oh, my oh, God. Oh, Larry. Beautiful shot, man. All right, Lapino. This one, I believe, is for par. Can he throw it in? What do you think, Vern? He wants to. He's done it before. Can he do it again? Oh, it's a good line. Just didn't fully commit, but that's a great layup. It's a great line. He'll be happy with that. All right, and Peter with another forehand. Oh, it looks like he rolled his wrist a little bit on that one. And there's a hidden ninja tree back there that he clipped. Here's Peter's upshot. Nice little beach toss. Safe. No effort required. All right, Lapino. Bang this home. Come on. Ah, oh, just a bit shy. All right. Gorman for par. You think he uses more than one joint on this putt? I don't know. He's getting into his pose. He is centered. He is ready to bang Nick. this thing home. I didn't see any other joints used. It was no. perfect. Hinge putting. Nice par. Cobra Kai. Cobra Kai, baby. Let's go. All right, Larry. Yes, sir. That was perfect. Nice putt for par. And Peter, let's wrap this showcase up. Easy. 
Nice bug. Good recovery. Way to save the bogey. I'm a Pino. Good recovery, my friend. That is your three hole showcase of Roy G. After the semifinals, James Gorman still in the lead with two strokes. Lapino caught up, though. He's only two behind him. Larry's three behind him. And Peter found a bit more of those trees down there at Roy G. Armando moving up. Jason's moving up. Steve, Don, and John. And Michael Meyer. How you doing, Michael Meyer? <laughs> anyway, that is your little... It's the last person you want to see chasing you down. <laughs> you don't want to see Michael Myers in that woods. No, sir. <laughs> that is your three-hole showcase from Roy G.